Hello again, fellow preppers. I have roasted chicory here to show you. And now if I had waited to harvest this root until the fall, which is when it's ideal, or the spring from a plant from the prior year, it would have been a lot thicker than my roots that were about this thick or wide. It would have been about that thick and wide. And I also did not get down to the bottom of the top root because the ground was so hard that day. So there would have been wider portions. So if you look at the other video, um, how to get the taproot out of the ground, just please bear in mind that did not get all the way to the bottom because of how hard the ground is and how deep the taproot is. And also I'm doing it in the middle of summer instead of fall or spring. So here's what the root looks like when you get done harvesting it. I'll try to hold one up close here. It kind of looks like a twig. It's really what it resembles. And before, you can tell from the other video how pliable it was. Now it'll snap literally like a twig. You can hear it. It's that hard. It's that dry. There's no little bit of moisture in here. So if you're going to be harvesting the chicory root and not using it right away to save it as part of your preps for medicinal or just to have some coffee to barter with, stretch your coffee further by adding it into it or making a, co a coffee substitute, you will definitely make sure it's completely dry. And you can leave it sit out like this for a while and it's not going to draw the moisture back in a day, maybe two days. But it will draw moisture again, put it in a mason jar, a shop vac, um, shop vac, vacuum sealed bag, don't put it in your shop vac, it's probably dirty in there. Um, you know, or some other glass jar, some kind of container with an airtight lid. The more air you get to it, the more it's going to deteriorate. A lot of people will put a whole bunch of them in a mason jar um, because it's just handy, you have a bunch, you throw them in the jar, there you go. But every time you open the jar, you are exposing it to moisture. With this and all the types of herbs or plants, really anything you're saving for long-term storage to make it more shelf stable you want to store it in smaller containers and it really doesn't take up any more space you can stack three little jelly size or the mini size jars i should have one sitting here here we go that i use for my herbs something this size would be great as you can see it's not quite a hand high for all you preppers out there who also have horses it's less than four inches tall that would be great. You've got plenty in there. You're probably not going to use them all in one fell swoop or whatever it is. Maybe you will, but you're still not going to expose a bigger portion of your stockpile to moisture. So here's what they look like. Now, if you're going to make the coffee, you can grind. You need to grind them up first in a coffee grinder or something equivalent. If you don't have a coffee grinder, you're going to need to, to do slivers as thin as what you possibly can if you're going to put it through a brew pot, a typical coffee pot. Lots of people recommend a French press. Not a coffee drinker. Not real familiar with how all that works. Um, another way is a pour over. And until I saw an episode of Yellowstone recently, which awesome show if you haven't watched it yet, um, the older lawyer son of the cowboy rancher played by Kevin Costner got pour overs that were ridiculously expensive at a coffee shop. Didn't know what that was. But you can also, if you know what that is, and are an avid coffee drinker. You can do it as a pour over, a French press, or in a coffee pot. In that kind of situation, you're going to need to make sure they are powdered. Very small, ground up, fine. You can do it by cutting off little slivers. And to make the little slivers into a powder, you can use a mortar and pestle. I have my two favorite ones here. This one I use, a little dusty, I haven't used it in a while. Actually, I think that was Dimatius Earth, so that's probably what's on it. Um, but this one I use for flowers and herbs, leaves, things like that. It's softer. It's wood. It's awesome. But it will not grind up even a slivered bit of um, chicory root or any other kind of root. You would need to use one more like this. This is my cast iron one. As you see, far heavier. And it would be capable of grinding slivered pieces of the tap root into more of a powder. You powder them and you definitely are conserving on storage space. Now, if you don't have a grinder, you're not going to do that, you're in a survival situation, or you just want to make the tea, you can go the quickie route, which is what I just did. Coffee cup is still hot. And I know we own percolator coffee pots that my husband puts on the wood stove for emergency when the power goes out or for a part of our preps. He likes a cup a day on most days, but he doesn't usually get that until he gets to his office. So we don't have one sitting on our kitchen counter like most folks. Um, but you could use a percolator that you would have for camping, off-grid living. That works just as well. But you can see in here the change in color in the water. Yeah, I'm spilling some, but that's okay. It's house cleaning day. 
Um, oh, but I did get my tap root wet, so that's not good. I'm going to redry those. Uh, and it's a lot thinner in collar than what it normally would be. I didn't get that much tap root the other day because the ground was hard and I didn't want to do harvesting too early. I just wanted to show the process and have enough of the chicory tap root. You can see how to use it. There's probably eight pieces of it in there, and you can use it whole when you're going to brew it like this. You can use a pot on your stove or a coffee cup in the microwave if you, uh, if the shit has not hit the fan or if you are running on Jenny Power. And what you do is you bring your water to a boil in the cup or in a pot on the stove. And after you bring it to a boil, you turn the heat down to a simmer if you're on the stove. In the microwave, you just turn the microwave off. I may as well go ahead and put these in here now because they're wet. Um, and then you can go ahead, you just toss your root in, like I just did. We'll just do that instead of saving them. You toss your root in, and once you have it in there, you cover it. Um, I just used an oven mitt. Something a little bit tighter would be better. It doesn't need to be airtight or anything, but maybe a piece of foil or something that's going to be a little bit more fitting around it. This worked okay. If you're using a pot, you can obviously use the lid. And you're going to let it stay in there and simmer. And I wish I'd been able to video it. I got a picture, but ah, still very hot. It's still definitely at simmer um, temperature. Um, when I tossed in the tap root, it immediately started boiling and popping up and down, kind of like frog legs in a, in a frying pan. And then it's going to stay in this state and covered. Some people say five minutes. Normally, people that make this a lot have told me, and that's how they do it, with 10 to 15 minutes. So it's really up to you the longer it's in there. Uh, the stronger it's going to be. Now, if you're using chicory as a coffee substitute, it's going to be like decaffeinated coffee. If you want to stretch your coffee further, or if you're weaning yourself off of coffee, which isn't a bad idea to wean ourselves off of all of our bad habits uh, before a long-term disaster, uh, you can go ahead and mix. And the ratios are in the article about how much to mix in with regular coffee just to stretch it further and to start getting yourself um, away from so much caffeine or to make your stockpile last longer. I have a can of Coke every morning and we have a stockpile that will be divvied out sparingly um, to wean myself off of that caffeine every morning. So those are things to think about if you're a coffee drinker, if you start getting used to this, putting a little bit in your coffee, uh, now you get used to the taste and you can wean yourself off a little bit, probably a great idea. I have weaned myself off of Coke, I'm down to two a day, some days one, on the weekend, sometimes three. So once you do that, you have it set in there and it's simmered long enough, you're going to need to strain it. You can run it through a fine strainer. Um, unless you're making a tea and you have, we have one somewhere, the little things that dangle down in there, the diffuser, then you don't have to worry about the straining so much, but still little particles can get in. And you can actually even use a coffee filter. I'm just gonna put this coffee filter on top of another coffee cup and use that to strain away my chicory coffee or tea mixture here. Oh, and that worked much better in practice than it just did. Not a problem. I'm just going to pour it back out. And it doesn't harm you if you get those particles in your mouth. People eat chicory root and use that. You just don't want to be choking on it. So it's not, it's like an infusion or something where you have to get rid of all of it. So we're going to try it again. If this does not work, I will actually get out my strainer. I was just trying to make it simpler and a more portable option. I should have gone a bit slower. Now it's soaking in. Water is still very hot. And it's soaking in more. You just want to strain away your chicory root. I'll continue to let that soak down through my about four different coffee filters here. If somebody doesn't drink coffee, you have a coffee pot out. I tend to have coffee filters around a lot for straining and using it to cover things that are drying and for craft projects with grandkids. So we're going to go ahead and kind of make a little bowl. That would have worked much better out of our coffee filters and touch it around kind of like you would do the dough if you're making a pie. That holds it up there and let it strain through slowly. Now, chicory has a bitter taste, and oddly enough, if you mix it with sugar, it enhances the sweetness of the sugar exponentially. Um, so that's something to think about if you are wanting to also use your sugar sparingly, or even your honeys, anything with sugar in it, sugar, stevia, anything with a sugar base to it, and it makes things far sweeter. So maybe you could make a little bit of cookies or something like that as a morale booster and use less sugar by putting in some chicory root. 
it's going to go ahead and continue to sink on down in there. And as I said, if I would have used the powdered form or more chicory, since I'm making just chicory coffee and not adding it to existing coffee, the color would have been much darker. Um, kind of would look like a decaffeinated or a maybe a little watered down decaffeinated coffee. And once you get all of your chicory roots strained out and it's cool enough to drink, then you can drink it. Um, depending on what you have on hand and what your purpose is for drinking it, you can add sweeteners to it because it does have a bitter taste. Um, it tastes less bitter during the spring, early spring if you get the root or the fall and during the summer with the intense heat as it's growing it does get a more bitter taste and it ebbs and flows during the different seasons. People add milk, honey, cinnamon, vanilla extract, coconut oil, sometimes maple syrup, whatever you might add to put a little bit of sweetness or flavor to it. You can even add some lemon if you wanted to or peppermint. I know there's all different types of coffee blends and things out there so those of you who drink coffee probably have an idea what kind of flavoring you want already but you can flavor it just like you would anything else and even during the spring and fall when it's less bitter it still has a bitter taste so um, I think it's a bit of an acquired taste but one that you get a little bit used to now and decide how you like the flavorings and if you use it medicinally adding honey to it it's just going to increase medicinal properties the same with the coconut oil so now I've got my coffee filters kind of twisted up here, wringing them out, being careful not to tear them because they're even more fragile now than what they were before I put the hot and pointy chicory root coffee through it. I'm going to have to strain out the last little bit. I wish I'd had more roots so you could get a better idea of the coloring. But that's something you can easily Google. And here's what our chicory coffee or tea looks like kind of like a broth chicken broth shading right now it would be I would say two to two and a half times darker how I use the right amount of chicory root or definitely blend it with coffee and you could let it cool to drink it um, if you're giving it to a child or it's a hot day in the summer and you want to drink it it's not going to harm the medicinal properties now when you roast the chicory root it does lose a little bit of its medicinal and nutrient properties especially the inulin but not so significantly that it can't be used medicinally because drinking chicory root coffee or tea is typically the way that it's used to garner medicinal value. So you can do it up with whatever sweeteners you might like, unless you just like it flat out bitter. There you go. You're getting a nice medicine and uh, some nutrients in your body. You can definitely not have too much nutrients during a long-term survival situation when we're burning so many calories a day.